The first trip out to the Grand Banks was one for the record books. <laughs> but the fleet let their guard down. And on the second trip, they were sucker punched by nature's fury. We're gonna get pounded. 50 to 65 knots here. Probably gonna be a pretty bumpy night here tonight. 190 miles off the South Carolina coast is the Big Eye. Is that buoy in the water? Oh. It's the longest four dives I've ever seen. Captain Chris Chomps Hansen is on edge. Ten days into his third trip, he's fishing in shark-infested waters with a short-handed crew and a greenhorn in over his head. All the ingredients for a captain's worst nightmare. through the buoy before Woody could snap it to the main line. Now he's adrift and being pulled away by the Gulf current. Pull your leader in right there. Here, wind it up. Throw the main line in. Hey, yeah, just, just guide that and I'll get this. If they don't reel the gear in, hooks and buoys will be sucked into the reversing propeller. He's got a big knot on his head. A knot that's bleeding into the water. Sure. Get a piece of rope and ladder right here. Here, Don. Pull that, hey, grab hold that buoy. Here, walk him down, walk him down with that. <laughs> over that way, over that way. Get him in the boat, get him in the boat. Pull. One. Pull. Two, three, pull. Oh, oh. Yeah. All my years, I ain't never in my life. Donnie would just been a snack. <laughs> It'd hate you like a gum drop. Come on. <laughs> Unbelievable. Who needs some stitches? You got anything, Sam Williams? While trying to hold on to the 70 pound buoy, oh. Don dislocated his shoulder and cut a two-inch gash in his forehead. We need new stitches. I'll call the helicopter. If Chomps has to call in a medevac, it's going to cost the boat valuable time and money, something he doesn't have. 600 miles to the north is the Francis Ann. We've got one mile to go. We're ready to go into the inlet here being in about 30 minutes. Captain Slick was ordered in by the boat's owner due to weather and a fish hole that was nearly empty. All right, Rick wants us to come in. Probably know we're not gonna make any money. Probably got enough fish to cover expenses, so we're just gonna have to take it as it's dealt. The boat will get his expenses paid, and that's about it. Boss will make nothing, I won't make anything, crew won't make anything. Even on a bad trip, Slick always delivers the boat to its owner in ship shape. Yeah, done down there or just half fast like every other time. Nice. Toaster, microwave, behind the sink, yada, 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 spice rack, under the toaster oven, around the sink, microwave, stove, the bag of potatoes with two potatoes, throw it out, go through the bread box, under the stairs, the floor's got to be vacuumed, the microwave, the sink, the spice rack, same is every time. Managing his crew of 20-somethings has been a major challenge. Nice job putting this box on here for me. Wait till I get up there, because this is your fault. Pull your heads out of your... But as Slick enters the treacherous Barnegat Light Inlet, 
The kitchen is the last thing on his mind. Right there, so, that's all submerged rocks, all right there. Okay. A lot of boats. That entire line, that. that monument, all the way back where those waves are breaking, it's all rocks. Usually the inlet's pretty hairball when we have 15 knots of the wind, like a sandbar right up front. The inlet, when the tide rips out, just stack the waves up out in front of the inlet. It's notorious. Dutch explorers actually named it the Inlet of the Breakers, or Barnegat Light. You know, coming through the inlet, there's a sandbar. There's some real heavy waves breaking on it as we were coming around the corner there. We took a couple over the stern. Weeks earlier, the Bjorn II ran aground on this exact sandbar. Not even out of the harbor yet. But today, the problem isn't getting stuck. It's getting blasted by the high surf. There's some breaking right now. It's pretty dangerous. Fish, no money, and no one listening. Slick has had enough. Captain definitely has to yell sometimes, you know, to keep the boat running right and keep everything, you know, in order. But I mean, there is a point where it's screaming at somebody is just not gonna, not gonna work, and they're not gonna learn. They're gonna be too scared to do anything. I know we're tied up right now. Hopefully, we can uh, get out of here. Possible. The Francis Ann is met at the dock by owner Rick Mears. With little to show for his trip, this won't be a happy homecoming for Slick. A hundred and fifty seven miles off the U.S. coast is the Bjorn II. Veteran Captain Linda Greenlaw is hauling back her first set on George's Bank. People always think about the ocean and how dangerous it is and how scary it is. And honestly, my biggest fear is the fear of failure. I've always had this like really bad feeling that I just caught my last fish ever. And it is scary. And I, I think all captains share that. Right now, fear is in the water. I mean, the, the fishing reports are really bad. We're all panicking. Hooks are coming up empty or full of blue sharks that have no commercial value. Shark on the ball. Shark. 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 Uh, shark, but I think it's a mako. No, maybe not. No, it's not. Swordfish can grow to 14 feet and weigh up to 1,400 pounds. Any fish over 100 pounds is called a marker, 200 pounds is a double marker, and so on. This fish could be worth a thousand bucks. The drag stick on deck isn't functioning, falling gear, and suddenly I don't have any steering. If I can steer to port, can't steer to starboard. Bump it out of gear here after it comes aboard for a minute. It's like having one oar in the water, we're going around in circles. 
nothing one way and all your nothing goes in uh, okay. since here. The connections are perfect okay. this side. So. All right, well let's see if uh, we can get the old one in there. Yeah, I think yeah, it just might have been just, you know. Inside. Okay. okay. We went to haul back and the jog lever would steer one way, a brand new one, which has been working perfectly all trip. And I'm going to steer one way and not the other. So we're going to take the old crappy one that I took off of here at the beginning of the trip. Maybe just put it back on. But first, they'll have to find the old one. If we can't fix this, we're sort of screwed. With 25 miles of gear left to haul back, the Bjorn 2 is crippled in the water. Coming up. This is ridiculous. A deckhand slips back into his old ways. He's got the attitude of a crying little girl. If I were back there, there would be help in this. And later. They're, they're, they're tight. The fleet's top earner is brought to his knees. Well, that's going to break. hundred and fifty five miles off the US coast is the Bjorn 2. So you don't have to panic now, but get something working here. Captain Linda Greenlaw's dead in the water. The jog stick on deck isn't functioning. Last thing we needed was right in the middle of the hall back have the jog lever not work. Only be able to steer one way. The crew's on a desperate search for the old steering lever. No luck yet, Arch. I know the old one went in a box somewhere. I have to put it in the engine room. I, the only thing I can think of. Worst case scenario is Archie's going to be standing here steering the boat by hand with me literally screaming through the window at him. I, I put it back in the box and it went it went out here. It, it, it was try it in there. I did. I went through everything. Yeah, this, this is it. Okay, got it. Yeah, it's it'll hold. I mean, it's not perfect, but it's it's just back in action. Something yeah. that's great, right? Jog steering lever seems to be fixed, so I guess we're getting tied back in here and give it a try. All back. Number one of trip number two, not looking too sporty. 621 miles to the south is the Big Eye. I can't stitch it. It's gonna hurt if it means somewhere to close it up. Captain Chomps is ready to call for a medevac after Don fell overboard. Head overboard! I can't stitch him. I don't have to do none of that. Got no needles in on that here. Scared all that. Chomps hired Don because he was a friend in need. Times are hard. Got a one-year-old baby. I need to make some money. I told him I needed a job. He told me to pack my things. <laughs> but if Don wants to stay on the boat, he's gonna have to get his wounds stitched up. Who's gonna stitch me up? You need stitches? Oh yeah. You see your head. I got that black thread, nylon thread, yep. I don't know if I got a needle, though. We'll make one out of a hook. <laughs> With no one on the crew willing to stitch him up, he's on his own. Just get yourself comfortable, Don, for now. We'll we'll figure something out. But Don's not going to let a two-inch cut keep him off the deck. Finally, the cameraman takes pity on him. See how good you are when this thing heals up. I got a scar or not, Kev. <laughs> Just watch your hair.
Don cauterizes the wound, and he's ready to work. Less than two hours after his life-threatening fall, the Greenhorn's back working. Throw to people, there's no old <laughs> Three hundred and fifty miles off Newfoundland is the Eagle Eye Two, the last boat on the Grand Banks. Four o'clock, Cap. Yes, sir. The rest of the fleet has followed the fish south and to the coast, but Captain Scotty isn't giving up until he catches the last sword left on the Grand Banks. Didn't look good on the scope. Didn't really look good on the temperature either. The temperature's real wide all of a sudden. I got too much hope, but we'll keep our fingers crossed. What is it? Is it a fish? Yeah, that looked like a swordfish. On the farm. Oh, whatever it is. I can smell it. Well, I just see the weather's not affecting the fish too much. Just started, and here we are, we got a fish. Oh, oh. Shark. Oh. Shark. Ah. shark got us. Yeah, it looks like we're gonna have a few sharks today. It's gonna be a long day. What's wrong with this picture? No fish on it. Empty hook. Hey, another empty hook? It's dangerous fishing out here in this. And it's even worse when you're working for free. Can't make them bite when they're not there. It sucks. If the swordfish are gone, so are the crew's hopes for a big payday. Shacks and nothing else. Not looking good at all. But for biologist Lisa Natanson, sharks are a life's work. The main goal of the Natural Fishery Service is sustainability of the fish stocks for all users. And if it weren't for people going out and commercial and rec guys cooperating with the scientists, we wouldn't be able to get these data, which ultimately are going to be very important in sustaining the fisheries down the line. Mail 121. There's just no sign of fish. We had a few small rats. That's a telltale sign that things are over. The end of number three. How many fish we catch in that? How many fish we catch in that section? Do you forget how to count? Zero. There's no fish on the front bench. It's all gone. Something. It looks like a swordfish. They got something there. I don't know what it is. Finally, there's money on the line. Swordfish. Our fingers crossed for us. Us to catch ours. Swordfish! Oh, oh. Yeah. I thought I saw it, but I couldn't tell. This time the sharks have beaten them to the catch. They got off the line. Must be saw a Mako chewing on the shot on the swordfish. That's half of it. Burning fuel and bait with nothing to show for it finally forces Scotty's hand. I thought we'd do at least, you know, maybe a cobblefish. <laughs> Didn't think it'd be quite this bad. The one swordfish, that's all we had, like 200 pounds. That's not good at all. We need much more to clear the expense for the day, and we didn't. Toast. I've already made my mind up. The decision's been made. Uh, we're out of here. <laughs> 2009 Grand Bank season is officially over. That's it for the Grand Banks. George's Banks, that's the next place. No, I mean, we only had one fish, so it was an easy call to make. 
we gave it the extra shot just to see if there was anything there, but there wasn't. So we'll be westbound and down, son. In the fishing village of Barnegat Light, New Jersey, is the Francis Ann. In the middle of one of the worst offloads in the boat's history, owner Rick Mears is wondering how he's gonna make ends meet. The price of fish is, you know, it's low. It's, I guess it's been coming back now, creeping back up slowly since last unload. If you don't have too much fish, you know, really ain't no price gonna save you. Yeah, exactly uh, tight. I was expecting a lot of fish, so I wanted to get as much down here as I possibly could. And McLean's in no hurry to relive a trip like the last one. The trip was kind of a disappointment, you know, especially after having a slammer the first one and then enough from the second one. Yeah, I'm depending on making some money on this next trip, you know. I want to get my truck paid off. I want to, you know, I got to pay my insurance. Nobody likes to work for free. Yeah, it sucks for everybody. Now it's time for Rick to shake things up on his boat. Well, Chamber, for better or for worse, I know you're not happy, but um, I'm going to run the boat next trip. My best interest is keeping the boat going. And business first, I could use that captain share in my pocket too. And Rick's not done delivering bad news. So I'm sure you're wondering, McLean, what the hell, where does that leave me, right? And bottom line is you're um, low man on the totem pole yeah, right man, now. Dude. Somebody has to get bumped. Lemmy's obviously. Of course. Not going Definitely. anywhere. Of course. Yeah. Danny's my nephew. Yeah, no, I understand. <laughs> He's not going anywhere. Yeah, yeah. Rick's looking out for his best interest, which is the boat and his family and, you know, the money that he needs to make. I have to, you know, go somewhere else. Nothing personal to claim, but yeah, somebody's no, got to go. Yeah. And, uh, you know, my best. and it sucks. It definitely sucks. It's a disappointment. You know, this, this October moon's big, big, big fishing on this moon. You know, a lot of big eyes been biting. And I was, I was hoping to get in on that. Hopefully, I still can. One hundred and thirty-seven miles to the east is the Bjorn Two. You know, there's a lot of pressure. I've just got my fingers crossed that there are a few fish left on George's and we'll be able to get some. This season, Bjorn 2 Captain Linda Greenlaw is putting her reputation on the line. I sort of feel more and more pressure to put a, to put a trip on the boat. After last season, you know, being such a failure, I said I'd never go again if I, if I couldn't get a season together this, this year. Uh, so this is like my last hurrah here. Tonight, the crew will set out 35 miles of main line, floating 30 feet below the surface, with a thousand baited hooks 30 feet below that. And Dave is already complaining. I got a mass off. As he gets more aggravated, his work suffers. At this point, we're lucky we're getting them out. This is ridiculous. Before leaving the dock, Linda made sure Dave was committed to a second trip. If you're going to be whining and crying and moaning and groaning, I'd rather have someone else. I'm in. Now, Archie's got a problem with the way Dave baits the hooks. Well, let's take all the advantages that we have right now. We got sticks on, put a stick on everything. I see Dave throw three baits with no sticks on them at all. Yeah, like, Linda said she wants a light stick on every bait. Make sure we get one on every bait. Dave had some kind of little hissy fit. So I just asked Archie to go back and take a peek and make sure Dave was over it and indeed setting light sticks. A little babysitting job. I don't see the worst of Dave. And I know the other guys do. 
because they tell me. But rest assured, if I were back there and saw some of the antics I've been hearing about, there would be help to pay. If his fellow crew members don't get to him first. In the small fishing port of Barnegat Light, New Jersey, is the Francis Ann. Owner Rick Mears has taken over the captain's seat after demoting Slick to deckhand. Well, Chalmers, I'm gonna run the boat next trip. Now it's all on my shoulders. Yeah, went out and had another band trip, you know, it went too good, you know, put me in a bad situation. Now Slick's forced to work on the deck. It's not time to, uh, the bet on me. Had a slammer trip, came in, went right back out. But whatever, take it with a grain of salt. Tomorrow's another day. I'm personally gonna have a lot of fun with Slick on deck. Everything's not gonna be my fault. <laughs> what are you doing, Danny? Shoveling some ice. Let's go, come on. Let's go get him, go fill her out. Time to go fishing. Lemmy, between little Danny and I back here, you're gonna be head spinning like a polter guy. You realize that, right? I know, I know. I know. I know we're one big happy group again. Everything's gonna be all fun and games again, but don't lag on me. Help me help you. Just days earlier, Slick demoted Lemmy. I know I'd feel pretty if I got demoted on my own damn boat. Now the ex-captain will find out just how that feels. Just 167 miles off the Carolinas is the little southern boat Big Eye. Morning. Hey, somebody turn the lights on right inside. Hey, go get a wrench right there and tighten that bolt up. Chomp spent yesterday keeping a crew member from being a shark snack. Hold up. Oh! Bear board! Two, three, pull. Donnie would just put a snack. Today, it's time to fill the hole. be a swordfish. That's what it is. Tangles on the line are usually bad news, but sometimes they're a sign of a big fish. Let's take your time, Woody. We can fight this for a whole bunch. You can get him up there, take him up there, but don't do nothing stupid. We need this fish, man. We need this fish bad. Hey, oh. Awesome. Y'all watch that bill, man. The wacky one is gonna cut you out of. Yeah, you're gonna get you're gonna get your fingers pinched. Well, I mean it seriously. Here, Don, take this. Yeah. Hey, watch out, watch out. The bill is essential for a sword survival. The hydrodynamic shape helps it swim at speeds up to 50 miles per hour. It's also a tool for stunning prey and a lethal weapon when the swordfish is attacked. Get his bill up there and get a hold of it. Pay that gap, Woody. Watch out for this bill, y'all. One, two, three, pull. <laughs> Back, Finn's gonna lock up every time. Rookies. Got him now. Here. Watch the bill. Still alive. When brought to market, this 300 pounder could bring 1,500 bucks. That's a fat one. <laughs> As the day wears on, Don's feeling the effects of his injuries. Woke up this morning, my pillow's full of blood. I rolled around, scratch that. 
Band-Aid off. My arm hurts worse than anything. I don't even feel my head. My arm hurts like hell, though. But he's not going to get a lot of sympathy from his captain. He's very lucky he didn't get hurt a lot worse than what he did. Lack of experience, not paying attention. Just about cost him more than he was prepared to pay for. Us. Maybe he'll learn a valuable lesson out of what happened to him. But it ain't no game and uh, pay attention. Thirty-seven miles off the New Jersey coast is the Bjorn Two. All right, gentlemen, let's go fishing. Linda and her crew are suiting up for their second haulback of the trip. So it's about time that we start fishing. But today, the crew's not going to let Dave's attitude get in the way of a big payday. Dave, all right. Tuna off the coastal waters is reason enough to celebrate. Woo! Big eye. Nice one. What? First big eye, man. Even Dave Woo! joins in the nice. fun. There you go, tuna boy. Woo! Hard mackerel. I am sick. That's a good one. We'll take it. We get about 12 more of those. Be a good day. Then Dave misses a buoy. Dave's so dramatic. All right, we'll get it, Dave. No problem. Relax. It's fine. But there's nothing about being at sea that allows Dave to relax. Those friggin' seagulls. Dump ducks. See, they're noisy. They're annoying. Dave's already started. Dave? Oh, yeah. You better watch it, because he's gonna... Feeding frenzy. That's the great thing. No. You don't have any. I always got it. Slap you around. Keep talking like that. You might find out how this old man works. Yeah, slow. Yeah. Young guys. Pull it all the time. You're only as old as you feel you are. And I feel like I'm 60 years old. The tension on the main line has suddenly gone slack. Gear parted off. We have parted off. You know, we've been flying through the gear pretty quick, so uh, you know, this part off is going to ruin our day. Track it down. Hopefully the guys will jump up on the overhead or on the bow or something, look for floats. Nice clear day is good. Good here. Searching for the boat's lost gear allows Dave to get away from the crew, and the crew doesn't mind getting away from him. He'll start screaming like a little baby when he sees it. Ah! The beeper, the beeper. He was just the newest guy on the boat. He's still a, still a green horse. He's He's still up. green around the gills. Yeah. Draw McQueen. Makes everything so blown out of proportion. He might be older, but he's got the attitude of an eight-year-old crying little girl. He does one job basically. Why did he get the job? Yeah. Right. Dave is torn between being a real jerk and, and, and really trying not to be. He had an opportunity to bail. When we 
went into Newfoundland, and uh, he may be kicking himself right now for not doing that. But uh, you know, it was his decision, and uh, he's going to have to live with it. hold of the, uh, the ball that's closest to the bitter end and is just hauling the slack line in to get to the end so we can tie in and get, get her going here again. The crew continues their haul back, hoping for a change of luck and a change of attitude. Just 142 miles off the Massachusetts coast, the Eagle Eye 2 has now joined the fleet on George's Bank. Got the deck all set up and Bait table all set up, so I think they're on standby and ready to go. Quite sure they're excited. I know I'm excited. After closing up shop on the Grand Banks, uh, we're out of here. George's Banks, that's the next place. We gave it the extra shot to see if there was anything there, but there wasn't. Scotty's going to take his chances in the coastal waters. We steam for about four days, which is about seven, eight hundred miles. We're done with the steaming. Finally, get to throw some hooks in the water here. Woo! Ready to look. <laughs> Scotty's a veteran on the Grand Banks, but George's is a new territory with a new set of obstacles. The only thing is, is we've got lobster traps to deal with, and we could lose gear with them. It's just kind of marking lobster traps here for right now, so we know where to look for the gear when the gear drifts up into them. <laughs> the coastal waters are a crowded minefield. Rogue currents can snatch up gear and wash it into other longliners and lobster traps. There's always competition out here, always. You got Japanese, you got Taiwanese, you got Portuguese, you got Newfoundlandese. Newfoundlandese. <laughs> This boat can't afford to lose any more time or money. The Eagle Eye 2 had a great first trip, but so far, their second trip has been a bust. We've been out here for like... 10 days, 10, 12 days, maybe almost two weeks. Then all we got is one fish. That's no good at all. OK, huh? A boat this size needs approximately 2,000 pounds a day to turn a profit. We don't catch fish. We don't make money. The only thing is, is we've got lobster traps to deal with. But the lobster pots could be standing between Scotty and a big payday. OK, throw it. Hopefully we're going to catch fish. We don't want no trouble. The trip is long enough now already. The crew sets out, hoping to catch fish without losing their gear in the pots. Hope we don't end up in the lobster pots at all this trip. You got to watch out for everybody. You set out one spot, drift pushing real hard. Next morning you can wake up, your gear is all tangled up in the lobster pots, and it's just a nightmare. Scotty goes all in and sets out 40 miles of gear. Worst case scenario, when we get caught up in lots of traps, we we're there all night and all day long. At just 55 feet long, the big eye is pulling the most weight per foot following a banner season on the Grand Banks. The 77-foot Bjorn 2 is two days into their second trip and falling behind. The Francis Ann was forced in due to weather. It needs to make up for lost time. The Eagle Eye 2 leads the fleet in raw weight, but it's still in the red on this trip. Now, Scotty's hauling back 130 miles off the Massachusetts coast. All right, pull that, pull that, pull that. And he's in a mess. The uh, gear drifted into the lobster traps. It's all collapsed on itself here now. Lobster pots everywhere. Gears going in circles. I think we're in for a mess. No fish. Lobster traps everywhere. How I wish I was in labels now. <laughs> Yeah, this is a screwed up day, man. And to make matters worse, their main line has wrapped around the lobster gear, making it dangerously taut. All right, wrap them around the cleat. Wrap them around the cleat. We got them right now. They're, 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 they're tight. 
Well, that's gonna break. Sink! Sink! Daryl is able to release the line before it snaps. This section's secure. But there's still five more floating over the lobster pots. It's important to get our gear back. We lose a lot of gear, it's coming out of our check. Each hook is worth $3. With a thousand on the line, that's three grand in hooks alone. All right, chop that mess. We got a mess here, and we got an even bigger one right there around that lobster pot. I'm sure we're gonna lose a lot of hooks, floats, and all sorts of stuff. With beeper buoys and 40 miles of line threatened, this could cost the boat up to $50,000. Hopefully not a loot load. Especially the main line, the beeper, the boy ball, the, the lot, they're very expensive. I can't afford the lot that. If they can't find the gear, the trip will be over. If we don't get this done in a reasonable time, we're not going to be able to fish. Once we lose, if we don't have something to haul, we're done. That's why I'm looking for something right now. Everything's crisscrossed and going different ways. I think some of the gear's sucked under the water. Fun, fun, fun. As night collapses on the North Atlantic, the lost gear will be impossible to spot. Pretty much total loss today. 12 hours later, still got three sections in the water. Eagle Eye 2's season hangs in the balance. Like I say, I'm not, I don't really fish around here too much. I know some of the other boys have had it, you know, taking them three days to get the gear back. I pray that's not the case with us. It sucks. Next time on Swords. Oh, I think we got something here, y'all. Barker! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hollywood. Chomps is on the fish. Kicking ass, taking names. Captain Slick gives way to Captain Rick. The tables are turned a little bit here. And the Eagle Eye 2's tangled lines turn on the crew. Freaking absolute nightmare. What's the line?